try a meditation. Thanks for tuning in to the Ty Smith Show. Today I have joining me a very successful entrepreneur. Her name is Yolanda Caesar. Yolanda, thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. A successful entrepreneur, so why don't you tell us about yourself? Well, I, I am an entrepreneur. I'm a registered nurse. Been nursing over 15 years. Nursing is actually a passion for me. I really enjoy helping people, and it kind of ties in with my belief system. Mm -hmm. So what kind of business are you involved in? Um, I actually own a home health care agency. Peace Haven Personal Care Services is located in Virginia. I have three locations. I have one in Chatham, Virginia, Danville, and Brosville. Wow. What inspired you to become an entrepreneur? Well, actually, um, I started out working in a hospital. Been doing that for years, traveling nursing. And one, one Sunday, my pastor started teaching us and talking about owning our own business. And he talked about owning your own business every Sunday for a year. So I said, wow, God, are you trying to tell me something? I never wanted to own my own business. I was happy um, doing the traveling nursing because I made my own schedule, made all the money I wanted. If I wanted to take a week off, two weeks off, I could. So then one day he started talking about entrepreneurship. How did you overcome the, the phobia of starting your business? You know, a lot of times, especially when you work for a company, uh, for many years, that fear factor of, you know, will I succeed? Well, actually, to be honest with you, hmm, I didn't have that in the beginning, so maybe I went in kind of sort of like a novice. Mm -hmm. I just jumped right in. That was my personality. I was very spontaneous. I would think about it and think about it and think about it for a year, weigh it, and then one day I'll just make the decision to just go to jump right in. So when you started it, because where did you go to school at? The last place I went to school was Winston-Salem State University. Okay. So I gather you got to have a degree in, in nursing. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very interesting, especially with the, a lot of the baby boomers that are retired now. I would expect mm -hmm. that that would be a great market. Uh, what motivates you to uh, do what you do? Well. I love to save lives. The last place I worked before I started my own business was I worked in ICU, neurosurgery wow. intensive care. And I got a lot of pleasure out of saving people's lives. Mm -hmm. Being there, being there in the midst of all that action. You, you know, the sicker they were. I worked at a tertiary hospital, so if we couldn't help them, no one else could. This was your, one st your last chance. And then also during my career, I actually saw God work miracles because nursing is about restoring one's health, medicine, providing the tools to restore health, and then being spiritual, knowing God and who he is, seeing him move. Because when we can't fix you or we can't help you, God can, and I've seen him do that. In, in reviewing your background, I've noticed that you speak a lot about a holistic approach to care. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Yes. Actually, when I first started out, when I first got saved, I think I started out more on the side, more spiritual. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, I forgot or lost myself, and I didn't know how to relate to the world. Mm -hmm. So, and I believe that, and when you do that, you fall victim in religion, and then you actually take God and put him in a box. Mm -hmm. And I knew that God was bigger than that. And I knew that God had a, had a bigger plan for my life. I just needed to get, to get somewhere so he can do those things that he showed me. And one thing he told me is that he wanted me to bring forth ministry or bring forth his word, his glory, from a holistic point of view. And in nursing, we treat the whole person, okay. the body, the soul, and the spirit. Whereas physicians, they treat the disease. That's the difference between a doctor and a nurse. We treat the person, they treat the disease. So when I look at you, I'm looking at Ty. Versus 
when the doctor looking at you, he's looking at your ailment and how to treat the ailment. What is the best way for the consumer to decide on something like that? You know, you, you know, you hear these different things. Should I go to a doctor or should I, or should I go to a more of a holistic, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, uh, type of uh, medicine therapy? I think it's based, it's based upon the individual. Mm -hmm. God uses medicine. He uses natural herbs, whatever you use. Mm -hmm. that, those are just vehicles based on your belief system. So what's the name of your company? Peace Haven Personal Care Services. It's actually part of Caesar Investments, LLC. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I provide home care to people in their homes. Mm -hmm. And we actually service all ages. What's your target market primarily? Is it primarily demographically? Is it in North Carolina and? Right now, um, my company is actually located in Virginia. I have mm -hmm. three locations, one in Chatham, Virginia, Danville, and Brosville. Mm -hmm. And I do see myself expanding because I'm growing a system, mm -hmm. not just a company. I don't want to be self-employed. I want to own a system where I can make myself duplicatable. If I'm not there, the system will still work. Plug people in the system and um, the business will continue to go forward. Now, where did that drive come from? You know, I've always had that type of, when I get something in my head, I will just keep going and going and going and going. And I'm actually passionate about business. I love business. I was actually nursing, and because I did traveling nursing, I didn't like to be attached. I didn't like politics. I avoided politics. I avoided wherever I had to give my opinion. I wanted to just come to work, do what I like to do, and go home. And one day, as I guess I must have matured in my thinking and spoke with other nurses, and they all had a focus area. So I said, you know, I need to find my niche, find what, I, what it is I really like to do. And one day God has spoke to me and he said, I want you to do, learn more about finances in corporate America. So that's when I started uh, to learn how to sell insurance. Okay. And that, that's actually what awakened my interest in business and money. So do you feel that from the various of experiences that you've had in business mm -hmm. that it kind of led you to what you're doing right now? Absolutely, absolutely. And what would you say to that individual that's watching the show that's thinking about starting their own business? Well, first thing is information. The first year, you should actually spend time in self-development because you want to be prepared. You want to be prepared with whatever, whatever information you want to offer and you have to offer your market. You want to know what market you're going to target. You want to know what information you're going to provide. And you want to make sure you know that information thoroughly. Uh, you don't want to be spontaneous. I've made a lot of mistakes, you know, being spontaneous. Even though that was part of my um, nature, that was also part of my immaturity. Mm -hmm immature and I had to understand, listen, I had to spend time in self-development. I had to spend time learning the business. I had to read books. Do you think failing in business starting out is a prerequisite, so to speak? Absolutely. Now, I don't want to disencourage anyone and say that, you know, when you start, you're going to fail most of the time. When I say that, I say, don't be surprised that some areas that you are targeting for, you may not succeed the first time. But those are learning experiences. That was, I actually owned a restaurant. Um, I was blessed. It was given to me. I walked in with nothing and I left the same way I went in. But when I left was experience. Wow. Now, you're also an author, too, right? Yes. Let's talk about that wonderful book. Yes. Um, the book is called Divine Healings. It is actually inspired because I am a registered nurse, and I do believe in God. I do believe in healing and deliverance. I believe that God wants us to be whole in our thinking. I believe that man is made of three parts, our body, our soul, and our spirit. And in my book, I talk about each component of man, where it originated. Why do I feel that we are three parts? Based on scripture. Then I also talk about the ailments and the diseases and the conditions that we suffer 
in all three areas, all three parts of man. I talk about the diseases of the body or the conditions and the mental illnesses of the soul. I talk about the things of the spirit and I also provide solutions, resources, information on why God desires us to be healed completely. Because one thing about it is God desires to get glory out of all of our lives, whether good or bad, he's going to get glory. That's why he says he gets no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Why? Because that person can't give him glory. It seems like years ago, uh, a lot of doctors used the method from a holistic perspective because mm -hmm. if we really think about it, the body is a unit. Right. So mm -hmm. the ligaments that's connected to the foot is communicating with the brain. So when you break it down, when you go see, you know, different types of specialists, maybe somebody for the foot, you know, maybe for the ear, right. it seems to me, and you, you take various types of medicines that, can you still, can the system as a unit still cooperate that way? Yes, because as nursing, we understand how the body works as a whole. Physicians also understand how the body works as a whole, but they also specialize. That's where you, that's where you get into collaboration of care. It's very important that we communicate. You have a team. You may have a team of physicians, and in that team you may have your nurses because we all working on different parts of the body as a whole. As a registered nurse, we, we're treating you. So I may have to pay attention to how you're feeling today. I may have to pay attention to what your spiritual belief system is because I understand that that is a key into your healing process. So when you speak of spiritual healing, are you speaking of it through uh, certain types of herbs or um, words, uh, meditation? When I, when I speak of spiritual healing, I speak of it in reference to how God sees spiritual healing mm -hmm. and how we heal because he said he's able to heal all manner of diseases. And if you want to look at meditation, yes, but what are you meditating on? Are you meditating on his word, on what he said? I'm able to heal all manners of diseases. You know, the scripture provides lots and lots of uh, scriptures on healing. Whenever we are going through a healing process, one thing about it is we have to prepare our mind for healing because how can the body recover? We're able to heal anything in our body based on what we're thinking. So let's talk a little bit more about your book. So without giving too much of it away, mm -hmm. um, what are some of the excerpts in your book that you would like to share? Well, you know, I read that book and I, I really enjoy it. Every time I read that book, I think, I said, God, how did I write this? I know it had to be God. I know it had to be revelation from him. Um, I really love the chapter on pain. I love the chapter on healing. I love the chapter on the body. I love every chapter. It is rich. It is straight to the point. There's no fluff. There's not all this extra things. I've actually been writing since I've been in high school. I've written a lot of um, poems, short stories. This is one of the things that I've actually published. And I'm very diverse in my writing. But I think that this is what God wants me to do. So give me an example on something that you were talking about relative to pain. Well, one thing about it in the chapter of pain, I actually talk about what pain is, where pain comes from. Why do we have pain? Pain, when we have pain, depending on the severity of the pain, pain actually tells us something is wrong. A lot of us won't seek treatment or seek help until the pain begins to interfere with our daily lives. That's when we will go and seek treatment. Sometimes it may be too late. Certain type of cancers, you don't have pain until it's too late. Um, I talk about why we have pain, the importance of pain. Because again, it's not necessarily talking about physical pain, but there's a such thing as emotional pain. You can have emotional pain where it actually uh, paralyzes you and you cannot carry on your daily functions. That's depression. Depression is a form of emotional pain. I'm glad you touched upon that because I've watched some programs where they talk about a lot of illnesses is in the power of the mind and how 
certain doctors would give a placebo where you think that you have an illness and you're thinking you're taking a, you know, a prescribed medication for it, but it's actually a placebo. But because right. you changed your thoughts, you ended up being healed without medication. So mm -hmm. that's relative to mm -hmm. um, what you're speaking of. Mm -hmm. I believe that because for one thing, you got to understand what, what are we made of? We are made, God created us, and the solution, the answer to what we need is in us. Mm -hmm. I believe that the body can repair itself. That's what healing is. What's the definition of healing? It's, it's the body being able to repair itself. Sometimes I always uh, wonder uh, where have the changes taken place at, because a dear friend of mine that lives up north, she's like 47 years old, mm -hmm. and she just had knee replacement. And years ago, you didn't, you know, hear or see anything, you know, of that nature occurring. Lifestyle changes, our diet, unfortunately, the things that we do to our body. And see, one thing about it is that the enemy is destroying us with pleasure. So where in the beginning we have all this pleasure, but what is the pleasure doing to us in the long run? When you speak of the enemy, what are you? Well, to? I speak when you speak of the devil. Okay. What, just, wh whoever your enemy is. Okay. Yeah. So what? What would you say some of the resolutions to, to that way of thinking? Is? New information, a positive outlook, renewing in our mind. Um, a lot of times you need to have new resources mm -hmm. and new information. I can't say it enough. When we, when we surround ourselves with positive things, positive information, positive resources that relate or that align us with God's will, mm -hmm. there's nothing we can't do. We can't do anything if we haven't went there in our mind first. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm in 200% agreement with you because I won't put anything in my body that's of a synthetic nature, but that's me personally. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of times when a person gets a headache, they think a certain thing. And, uh, you know, what do you think it's going to take for to kind of have that balance? Because I know in some instances medications have been a great uh, cure or relief. But then you have those, and it seems like uh, consumers are getting more and more, you know, conscious about natural healing and the things that you're talking about. Well, um, I think as we continue to grow in our knowledge base and continue to receive new information, as we continue to want to seek out those tools to help us become better holistically, I think that's when we'll be able to change in our mindsets and our thinkings and in our beliefs. Do you we all have areas that we need to grow in. Mm -hmm. Do you find that your customer base when someone comes into your uh, clinic that they're more receptive with uh, your method of treatment? Well, because I provide home, home health care services, we actually provide care in the home. Um, I'm not with every one of my clients. I actually send staff into their home. My staff even when I orientate them or the information that I provide them, I do share my thoughts with them. I do impart in them my way of thinking about God. I feel like that's my prerogative. I have a right to do that. If you want to work for me, <laughs> then you're going to have to hear that. Is there anything else you would like to share with our listening audience? Well, I just, I, I enjoy my book, Divine Healings. I think it's a, it's a really good book. You know, I write a lot of stories, and I enjoy the reading one. I might even like to read it two times. But this book, I actually read it three, four, five, six times. And I, because every time I read it, I get a new revelation. Do you have any testimonials that you could share in terms of someone utilizing, you know, that method? Well, uh, actually, for myself, I actually suffered for de for, um, from depression for five years. And I didn't want to get treatment for depression as a nurse. I was like, oh, my God, am I going crazy? And then as I began to talk to other nurses, and every nurse was on some type of antidepressant. Mm -hmm. So then I said, well, maybe I need to get on an antidepressant. So one day I went to talk to my doctor, and I just sat down to tell him how I was feeling. 
and he was a really, really busy doctor. He's very, he was in and out. But that one particular day when I sat down, he just sat down and listened to me. So I, he said, well, you know, Yolanda, there is a such thing as being sad and then there's a such thing as being depressed. Um, and I was depressed. And so I actually took antidepressants for a year. I was ashamed and wouldn't tell anybody I was taking antidepressants. Then one year, um, I was actually listening to, was I listening to Creflo Dollar on TV? <laughs> And he's, I think he preached a message about um, getting up. And I, and I made up my mind. I said, you know what, I got to get up from here. I've been in this position for five years in my mind. And I made my mind up to get up. You know, I think that's such an inspiration because so many times when a person is going through something and they're depressed, the uh, false assumption is, that you're the only one that's going through it. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times when you're going through depressions or being stressed out about something, when you openly admit that, you know, I am stressed, mm -hmm. then a lot of times the healing takes place. Uh, what motivates you? Well, actually what motivates me is seeing change, not only in my life, but in other people's lives and just my passion for God, my passion for others. It's like falling in love and you want to tell everybody. You know, it's the same concept. Now, when is your book scheduled to be released? Yes, my book, it will be available April the 6th. You can actually go to my website, um, www.yolandacaesar.net, April the 6th, and you can order it. I can't wait to get that book. Yeah, me either. You know, because, I mean, I, I enjoy watching TV, but to talk about the spiritual aspects of things because, mm -hmm. you know, they say we are spiritual beings in a physical body, and sometimes, you know, conversations may not be right. directed towards that, but I think in order for us to understand the full scope of, of who we are, mm -hmm. being a uh, spiritual being, have a phys having a physical experience, it's important to connect, those, reconnect those dots again. Right. And, you know, I also share a testimony, the concept that I use. I talk about fasting. Um, my mom has a wonderful testimony. She used to be on drugs. And one day I, I was talking to my sister. I said, you know, I learned that um, about fasting. You know, 40-day fast at, will cure generational curses off our lives. I talk about that. And I said, and I told my sister, I said, let's do a 40-day fast for my mom. She didn't even know we were going to do that. So we fasted for 40 days, and on the 40th day, my mom tells me that she is no longer doing drugs. And my mom has been drug-free I mean, drug for three years, and that was a 40-day fast. Me and my sister did. She knew nothing about. So I know fasting and prayer works. We did it together. Yolanda, I know that you are very excited about your book signing, so we're is your first book signing going to be held? My first book signing will actually be in Danville, Virginia at the Stratford Conference Center. Wow. Yes, I will, you can actually pre-order and I will sign it from 5 to 6 and then again from 8 to 9. That's very exciting. So how long did it take you to actually uh, write your book? Um, you know, it actually took me a couple of months. Is there going to be a sequel? Yes, there's actually two other books right behind it. Wow. Uh, Capitalizing on Your Small Business and Destroying Beauty. You're so diversified. What? <laughs> you know, that's very inspiring today, you know. You know some... I want to be able to reach, reach everyone. Like I said, I, I'm bringing this from a holistic point of view. I want to be able to touch the body, the soul, and the spirit. I want to be able to... Um, inspire you or give you tools in the spiritual as well as the natural and our business is part of us being holistic I say that because I think it's very inspiring because you have a lot of displaced workers right now you know, a lot of people are being laid off you know major corporations mm -hmm. are downsizing because of technology and uh, overseas movement so I think with the paradigm shift it's very important to think in terms of becoming an entrepreneur Absolutely. And one thing about it, you have to find your, your niche, find that market. Mm -hmm. Because you can, and also you have to have information to know how to market your business. You can have the best idea, 
the best concept, the best business, and then put it in the wrong location or start it at the wrong season and not be successful. Somebody that's out, out there listening, hopefully it would give them the inspiration to take action. Because right. pro procrastination, if you're not careful, can be a thief of movement. Absolutely. And one thing I um, just want to throw this in there, I am currently working on a training center where that I can offer entrepreneurial classes, offer resources, offer information, and actually offer packages where I will actually help you put your business plan, put your business together, and bring it into manifestation. So it's not just a vision, it's not just a dream, it can actually become reality. As a nurse, I'm also an educator. So I, I'm educating all the time, every day. Well, Yolanda, I would like to thank you for being on the show. Well, I appreciate you having me. And providing such great wisdom Absolutely. Uh, to our audience. Absolutely. And I would like to thank you for tuning in to the Ty Smith Show. Yolanda Caesar brings forth ministry from a holistic point of view with her new book, Divine Healings. Yolanda is an author, entrepreneur, motivational speaker, and has over 15 years of clinical experience. She's also owned several businesses and understands the joys and pains of entrepreneurship. Go to YolandaCaesar.net to get your copy today or join Yolanda for her book release launch on April 6th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Stratford Conference Center in Danville, Virginia. Divine Healing by Yolanda Caesar. Start living the life God intended for you.